9.20 p.m. Andy and Martin are catching up with a motorist driving at night with no lights on. We were, we were trying to stop you. Oh. Yeah. What? Well, it's dark and you've no lights on. And everybody, the whole way up the road was flashing you. Could you just pull in over there just have a quick word with you? All the cars that were uh, coming against us was flashing uh, the person in front of us. So we had to pull him over uh, to have a chat with him in relation to his driving and lack of vision. How are we doing? Do you have a license? I'm, I'm going to take a few details off you, all right? Just in the, the manner of your driving, OK? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good I never had an accident me, right? Oh, well, it's, well... It's not whether you had, but uh, the potential was there because of the, as I say, the weather conditions, no lights on, on your car, and you weren't wearing your seatbelt. But Martin was dealing with him, I was just keeping an eye on the other traffic that was approaching from, from both sides, also uh, just, to, just to regulate the traffic. After a couple of minutes, I just heard a vehicle approach, and it seemed by the noise of the engine that it, that it was travelling fairly fast for, for the built-up area, so just decided to keep an eye on it as it came around the junction. So we indicated to the driver of the vehicle just to pull over to the left-hand side onto the footpath. But as he pulled over, he was drawing me away from the patrol car. So eventually, as I got up close to the car, he spun the wheels and took off. Three, seven, and eight, one. Okay. Oh, nice. Are you going? Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'll get it back here. The car takes off and gains vital seconds to escape. He definitely knew what, what he was at and uh, maybe he did come in contact with Gardy before and uh, seeing that two Gardy on the road pro patrol car a good bit away, he decided to take a chance. Obviously he knew that there was a couple of roundabouts further up and once you, you get to a roundabout you can go anywhere. The guards have lost sight of the car and they haven't got a full registration number. It could have gone in any number of directions. It's now a guessing game which road he has taken. That's it up there, look. Failure to stop is a serious offence if, obviously, if we catch him, he'll be brought before the court. He could also possibly be facing then the charge of dangerous driving because of the manner of the driving to get away from us in, in the first place. All I wanted to do on the particular occasion was to caution him in relation to his driving because, as I say, I had heard his driving as such but hadn't actually visually seen it. Andy and Martin take a straight route through a series of roundabouts and head towards the M1. They radio in the car's description in case it's spotted. If you could uh, radio or phone ahead, maybe to Navin, just to keep a lookout for it. Uh, we do not have eyes on the vehicle. Two males, a front a female passenger. Over. Roger. They check with the toll plaza on the M1. How are things? A red seat, Leon. Three people on board. Been through here in the last five, ten minutes. Any chance? No. Nine times out of ten, we're stopping people for offences. Their cars are 100 percent. They're taxed and insured. Perhaps maybe they're not wearing seatbelts or something like that. Then when you get someone like that, that obviously doesn't want to speak to us. That's the driver that we want to deal with. The car is nowhere to be seen. They've lost it. We weren't too impressed, like you know, but. Uh, uh... As, as we always say, they have to be lucky all the time. We only have to be lucky once. Coming up, Andy and Martin make an arrest in Drogheda. Now, I'm probably arresting you, right here on the bench walk. A speeding driver has no license and no insurance with him. Do you think you should be driving at all? If you're going to drive like that? Donegal. 9 p.m. Gardy Eamon Rorty and Sean Tully, based in Burnfoot Traffic Corps, are on patrol. They've just met a car driving at high speed and have turned about to catch up with the driver. It took a bit of time to catch up with him. He, he turned off the main road up to the side road and we caught up with him and he stopped. Um, we really were concerned that the, the, the speed he was, was driving, it was just a bit much for the roads and the weather conditions were very poor. Why were you driving so fast? You can't really say. Do you think you should be driving? Do I think you should be driving so fast, like? Do you think you should be driving at all? Well, if you're going to drive like that? Well, I almost shouldn't be driving like that, 
There's another problem. The driver has no means of identification or proof of insurance with him. Under Irish law, all drivers must carry their driving licence with them. Once we stopped him, um, we found that he had no paperwork with him at all uh, as regards insurance and driving licence. And he, he made things very difficult for himself, really. The driver says he has trade insurance, that he imports cars and transfers his insurance over each time he brings in a new car. I'm a bit concerned that you have no ID. You're telling me you've got trade insurance, you've had insurance since this evening. He's claiming he's a car dealer. He's claiming he has insurance that he can drive any car and it's always changing and stuff like that. We're not entirely satisfied. Eamon takes a special interest in car insurance and has a good idea what this driver should be paying for his insurance if he is dealing in cars. Who are you insured with? And how much was your policy? How much is your policy? How much is your policy? Like and what does that policy allow you to do? To change changing cars, two cars, to be changed all the time. Two cars in the policy at all the time. Any two cars? No, I have, no. To ring, I have to ring them up and change the car. Over. Right, and have you rang them up to change no, this car? No. Our, our problem there is that without getting that car stopped and speaking to the driver, we don't know who is in control of that car. I do have a policy, like, this car is on the policy, but it's not on paper at the minute because I only got it last night. But you have nothing, you have nothing at all. I have a policy of... No, for this car, you have nothing. You should have the, the policy of the car that you traded in. Is that right? No, I'll have that. I can tell you now that any, I know it might mean nothing, but any of the guards know, well, that's, You're right. that's all right. The guards know myself, I know that I've the cars, and I know that I've changed the cars. The driver says that he is known to deal in cars by Gardaí in another Donegal station, and that they'll vouch for him. Sean makes a call to their colleagues. Yeah, he says he, he would know him. That was the sales and bits and pieces of cars. So we'll just make the demand off him. But in fairness, it did uh, transpire that he was dealing in cars. He made it quite difficult for himself. We were, there, we were there in the middle of the night. We have no access to the information. And he should be able to provide something to us to show that he has a licence and he has insurance. Um, we'll be reasonable with him, but he has to go some way to helping himself. The driver is asked to come down to a station of his choice and produce his paperwork within 10 days. He does so. Before they let the driver on, they have a last word about his driving. Yeah. You're built up here on a Friday night. It's a bad night. No excuse for it at all, right? Right. Okay. Come on.